Snipers, you have to see what's happening to the Bitcoin price this Wednesday as we are seeing weakness at 44,800 now below the 200 day moving average with a bearish tail with today's candle, yesterday's candle and the candle before that. If we morph everything from the smaller time frames into the larger time frames, what you'll notice is on the four hour chart, we are starting to come test this 100 period moving average. And this is going to be a very major support level at 43,800. And if Bitcoin is not able to hold this level, we are already going to give Bitcoin some room from this structural support level to even get this wick towards this forty three thousand eight hundred dollar level. If we don't see volume at this level, that's going to be a very, very big problem, because at that point, now we have a potential downside scenario on the table that could take us to thirty four thousand seven hundred and eighty eight and potentially even to see further lows. And since everything morphs into the larger time frames, since we're already coming to test this 100 period moving average on the four hour chart at forty three thousand eight hundred, does that give us the indicator that we're possibly going to come and test the 100 period here on the daily chart at thirty eight thousand US dollars as a first potential sign of support or an area of support, to say the least. We're going to talk about that today. And there's still a chance that we could come and test forty nine thousand seven hundred. I'm going to be your umpire. The bulls are also important. So I'm going to address the bears and bulls today. And I'm going to take a little bit of a different approach to talk about Ethereum. Of course, the leading indicator for all coins also showing weakness today. The total cryptocurrency market cap chart also coming down to test one point seven eight trillion dollars in market cap. And then the revolving parts like others dominance and Bitcoin dominance are also extremely important. So we'll talk about Bitcoin dominance today. I've made a bold prediction that Bitcoin dominance is going to start seeing a reversal in trend because this chart notice here is very similar to the DXY and they have a lot of correlations. Notice how in the top of the Bitcoin bull cycle in 2018, that's when the DXY started to move up. And as soon as this DXY formed this higher low, that's when Bitcoin dominance. I'm sorry. I'm looking at the Bitcoin dominance chart right now, but look, the DXY is so similar. 2018 Bitcoin formed that higher low, and that's when the DXY started to move up with Bitcoin dominance. So they're very correlated. And we have to understand that the fundamentals are just as important as the technicals. A lot of people are talking about the war, what's happening with China. And you have to realize this. I personally, I come from Mosul, Iraq. That's the most bomb city of the war on terror. I was born in the United States. However, my parents have told me stories about, you know, sleeping at night, not knowing if missiles would strike their location. And so this really hits home to me, you know, with the Afghanistan war ending, realize that war budget is the most expensive part of a country's expense sheet, right? The United States Incorporated, it's a company. War budgets are the most expensive thing. And so with Biden ending this war, are we going to be seeing strength with the US dollar? Is that fundamental going to play a part with this DXY moving? I'm going to talk about this because remember, if this DXY moves up, Bitcoin dominance chart is very similar. That means it's the end of all coin season, at least temporarily. And I also want to talk about what I'm watching when it comes to Kathy Wood purchasing Plantier shares and Plantier just bought a massive position in gold, liquidating some of their stocks and precious metals are actually looking very strong. And so with this Afghanistan war ending with the uncertainty with the US dollar, with the dollar potentially seeing strength and the US being the largest holder of gold. And then you have, of course, Russia that holds, I believe, the largest amount of platinum or silver or one of those. And China, I believe, is the one that owns the most platinum, if I'm not mistaken. But um, we're going to look at gold and palladium today because I want to talk about what I'm expecting to happen. And uh, just this is my assumption and how I'm playing the market with, you know, the potential of the S&P 500 seeing some downside. This is capital that's going to flow somewhere. And so I'm trying to go where the hockey puck is going, not where it's currently at. And I believe that we'll start to see capital flow into commodities. And then I'm also going to talk about Chinese tech stocks because 
people don't realize how powerful Alibaba is. And with all this Chinese FUD, look how much below this 200 week moving average we are. And you guys are gonna understand, China is at the early stages or even the late stages, I believe, of developing their own airline, right? And, 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 and above and beyond that, the new Silk Road that runs through from China to Europe uh, is really a, a, a huge economic um, you know, uh, benefit to, to many countries in the, in the West, uh, like Europe, uh, Germany, uh, and, and, you know, just all of these countries uh, outside the United States. Uh, China plays a big part in their economy. Uh, and Alibaba being so oversold, I'm just saying, I, I, if the S&P 500 is going to come down, I want to know where that money's going, right? There's a reason this market's worth a couple trillion dollars. The money's going to go somewhere. So we're going to follow the money today, I guess, on the Snipers channel. And let's just dive into this Bitcoin analysis as we always do. We'll start on the weekly chart. The weekly 20 period is the most important support level right now. That's home base. When you're above the 20 week moving average, that means you're in a bullish trend. It's sitting at this point around this $42,800 level. And the reason I don't really care about the 20 week is because just below it is the real support at 41,950. And then just below that is the monthly open at 43,000 or 41,500. And so this right now is going to be my pocket and target for Bitcoin if we maintain price action below 44,800. So I expect Bitcoin to come test this monthly open at 41,950 the longer we stay below 44,800. Now, could we start looking at some of the smaller time frames and get hints as to where price action is going? Well, let's look at this four hour. We have a bearish candle with a bearish tail and this all is price action below the 200 day moving average. Keep that in mind. So we have the 200 day moving average sitting right here. We'll keep that in blue. And so we pretty much have this continuation candle, sort of bullish continuation candle, uh, but then an immediate rejection. I wouldn't call this a bearish engulfing, but this obviously showing bears are in the market. And now we currently are testing the market structural support for the first time. And we're below 44,800. So you tell me what's most likely at this point. Let's say we come and test 41,950 just as an assumption, right? If we test this level and it does not hold, we don't see volume come in. At that point, I believe Bitcoin is in the early phases of seeing one more push to the downside that could potentially bring new lows towards the end of this year. But that doesn't mean we'll go too far below the $28,000 level that we already tested. You know, what if we come down, we form another low just below 30,000, right? I think that that would be a very fair downside scenario for Bitcoin if we break 41,950, but really that monthly open at 41,500 ish. Now, at any point in time, if you don't want this scenario to be the most probable, then this is what I would be monitoring. It's pretty simple. Actually, the weekly opens at 47,000 US dollars. If we can get above this weekly open, in my opinion, that gives us the chance to test 49,700. We have some room in this market structure to get even a little bit above that. And that would be very nice to see if this happens. Maybe my altcoin prediction about Bitcoin dominance increasing is wrong. I don't know. I don't think that Bitcoin dominance will increase if we see Bitcoin continue to the upside because that will bring altcoins to the upside. So if we keep going up, I think that maybe I'm a little bit too early on that prediction. But if we break this level at forty one thousand nine hundred and fifty, I do believe my prediction is going to come into play where Bitcoin dominance is going to see a reversal here from this 20 week moving average, get above the 20 week moving average and pretty much follow the DXY in a slow grind back to the upside. And if that happens, of course, there's several ways to hedge against this. If you've watched our last few videos, you know, you can either take altcoin profits back into Bitcoin or if you don't want to sell spot positions due to short term capital gains being triggered, you could take a short when 
uh, an altcoin sees a high level. I wouldn't short Bitcoin. I'll tell you that right now because we're going to see money flow into Bitcoin regardless. Bitcoin dominance is so low and others dominance right now, you know, it, it's really a, a, a game of of when is this going to break down? In my opinion, um, it could be here. It could be a little bit higher or it could even be a higher high. Um, here's what I think is going to happen. I think that we're not going to see this, you know, higher high just yet. I think that there's a possibility we could just kind of trend down a little bit while Bitcoin dominance comes up before seeing that scenario around October, November of this year where Ethereum tries to make a new high and it does. People start saying, oh, Ethereum's going to flip Bitcoin. And I think that that would happen a little bit later and that would justify and make the people happy that want Ethereum to flip Bitcoin. But then I think that it's it's just going to be, you know, a, a, a higher high for this to just come down and the Bitcoin will eventually make a new high after Ethereum uh, because Bitcoin is king and you're not going to convince me otherwise. Um, you know, being in the room with Charles Austin on a couch in Wyoming and him talking about the cryptocurrency market, I will never forget those days. So just realize that um, Bitcoin is king. 65,000 Satoshis breaking on Ethereum to Bitcoin is a confirmation of our prediction of Bitcoin dominance being the player. And we're going to start seeing others dominance falter. Uh, so we'll monitor 65,000 Satoshis. Not much to talk about with the total cryptocurrency market capture. I don't really have much to talk about here um, because we're probably going to see this move sideways um, with with this sort of uncertainty in the market. Others dominance. We talked about it. And then let's talk about some of these things that are more fundamentally based. Right. So when you're trading, 80 percent is emotion. I said this in the Charles Hoskinson interview. Ten percent is fundamentals and ten percent is technical. So fundamentals matter. Like I said, I come from one of the most bombed cities from the war on terror. This Afghanistan war ending does hit home to me. And so I want you guys to realize that this could be a catalyst for the US dollar to see strength with the fact that they don't have a expense for war anymore, at least a significant expense such as a active war. And so that certainly can increase the strength of the US dollar. Let's say they start, you know, raising interest rates and then next thing you know they raise taxes all this stuff feeds into the opinion and listen here's the other thing warren buffett tells you all the time never bet against the u.s government i agree and so i'm just saying this dxy moves up guess what bitcoin dominance moves up and then everything we're talking about comes together s p 500 where's the money gonna go if the dxy moves up like it always does it hedges against the you know the high price to earnings stocks the tech stocks like if you look at maker dow for example even crypto maker dow is at like a 66 p ratio when we talked about it a few months ago this was like three months ago it was at a 20 p e ratio so what happens when the s p 500 falls where does that money go is it going to go into these high p e stocks no it's going to go into you know, a commodity like gold that hasn't seen any upside for almost over a year now. It's just been trending down, right? Plantier, by the way, just bought $50 million worth of gold. Oh, Kathy Woods just increased her stake for ARK Invest, uh, their Plantier stake over the last few weeks to, uh, you know, uh, 33%. Um, uh, you know, more than what it was previously. All this is, is is feeding into the opinion in my in my best in my best analysis that we're going to see commodities strengthen. So you have this bullish wick. Yes, it's a red candle, but look at this, this resistance for the gold. We already saw one fake out. It tested. It got rejected. It got rejected a second time. The third time you knock on a door, what happens? Here's another thing. Palladium. Look at this monthly chart on palladium, how nice it's been trending up since 2006. This is actually, I think, more scarce than gold. But more importantly, look at this weekly chart. This looks like the QQQ back in, you know, November, right? It's just staying above this 50 week moving average, you know, kind of sitting around the 20 week. Palladium is also a commodity. 
I, I don't know. Uh, you know, it, 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 look at this. It's showing downside. Are, 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 you know, when, when when a war is ending, are we going to be expecting commodities to strengthen or, or weaken? I mean, especially in Afghanistan, I'll tell you right now, people there are worried. What are they going to want to do? I mean, are they going to go buy Bitcoin? I don't know. They might go buy some. I mean, if I were them, I'd have food and water and some ammo, right? Uh, but they might go and buy gold and silver to hedge against more uncertainty. Uh, and then Chinese stocks are doing so bad over the last few weeks. You buy the fear. Look how far below this 20 week moving average we are. And Alibaba is an oscillator. It's a beautiful oscillator. It's a beautiful company. And if you guys really understand what's happening in China, you'll know what I'm talking about. They have their own airlines coming. And right now they use a lot of the American, you know, uh, and, and I believe German uh, companies for, for flights like Boeing and stuff. But, you know, when they have their own private airline company that's actually already being built, um, I think it's in its final stages. Imagine what they could do with Alibaba, for example, with next day shipping, for example. I mean, they're going to be a huge competitor to Amazon, in my opinion, especially with the new Silk Road. If you understand what that is, you know, I was um, I, well, I wasn't dating, but I took a girl on a date from Russia and she was telling me about the new Silk Road. And um, and I, I watched a whole documentary on it recently because of, you know, her mentioning it. And, and it blew my mind to see how, you know, they can take all this stuff from China take it down the train all the way to Europe and 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 throughout the way there they're given all of these you know countries and smaller places that don't have the manufacturing capacity that China has these products at very low costs uh, and and really stimulating the economy and then China has heavy investment in Africa and so there's a lot to say about uh, you know uh, China but um what I will say is Alibaba you know I just made a purchase on AliExpress the other day <laughs> and with that being said, I hope you enjoyed today's video. My name is Naeem Alabadi. You're watching the Sniper's channel. If you want to win Principles by Ray Dalio, one of my favorite books on value investing, all comments on our videos are eligible to win a book every single day. I like this comment. It's a dude seller says, dude, if ETH retraces back to twenty six to twenty eight hundred dollar levels, I'm betting the farm, baby. You know, look what I said back to him. I said, don't bet the family farm, bet the family chair, not the dining chair, the patio one. Thank you guys for tuning in today. I hope you enjoyed today's analysis. Let's break that YouTube like button algorithm. And until next time, snipers 